in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. You guys can go. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time for the Word. How many believes there's still life in the Word? Whatever you need today, it doesn't matter how big or how small, how great it is, I can promise you that you can find hope in the Word of God. Amen? And so we're going to be there. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. I'm excited. I hadn't got to preach in a couple weeks, so I've kind of got it bottled in there, so bear with me. And uh, we'll get it out this morning. I'm excited to see this morning that uh, there's, a, there's a, a piece of gum on my pulpit. I might just leave it there uh, because it's from my daughter when she got baptized with the Holy Ghost from a couple weeks ago. And so we're just going to leave that right there and that'll be my reminder for now. And so she began to speak in tongues and she was having a hard time because she was chewing on gum. So we had her spit it out. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 simply says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything, look at somebody and say anything, according to His will, He hears us. We talked about this, I believe it was last week for a few minutes uh, when we were getting ready to receive the offering, that we have the confidence to ask Jesus for anything, anything. But the stipulation is, is it has to be according to His His will. How many of you know that a lot of times we spend most of our prayers and our thoughts and our words on what we will rather than what He wills? Amen? We spend a lot of our time and effort on what we want. Well, well, I would like a bigger car or I would like a... Uh, a new iPhone, you know, there, another one's about to come out, you know, coming up. And, uh, you know, or I would like the new, uh, my son came, we, he just got a Wii U a few, uh, a couple of months ago, and he was so excited about it. And just the other day, he said, uh, I really would like a new Xbox. You know, he doesn't even have an Xbox. And I, and I just told him, no. Pastor James talked about that. And, and I exercised the power to say, no. Uh, whenever he asks, how many game systems do you need is, is my fault, you know. And um, so, uh, but look, we always, we spend most of our time on what we want rather than what God wants. The title of this message is to choose wisely because here's the thing, you can ask for anything you want. Anything. But I would choose wisely what you ask for. There's an old saying that says, be careful what you wish for. Because you might just get it. You might just get it. But, but what I'm telling you this morning is you better be careful what you ask for. Because a lot of times God will permit things in our lives. There's a permissive will of God and there's a perfect will of God. And I, I would encourage you this morning, be careful to ask for the perfect will of God. Because He's permitted some things in my life. And I believe it was just to teach me a lesson. So I'm, uh, I want to encourage you, be careful what you, be careful what you ask for. And, but the Word says here that if you ask anything according to His will, that He hears you. And so what we want, uh, many times we say, it feels like God is not even listening. How many's ever said that before? God's not even listening to my prayers. It's like He's not there. It's like I'm talking into the air and nothing's happening. And listen, but, but what the Word says is maybe you need to change what you're asking for. Because if you're asked according to His will, we have the promise that He hears us. Now, does this Scripture say that He hears us and immediately gives us what we want? No. It just says He hears us. He hears us. So let's look at this. I believe that this is why it's so important for us to pray in tongues. We are still a Spirit-filled church. Can, does anybody agree? And it's so important for us to to pray in tongues because look, and when we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit prays through us and He prays the will of the Father. 
Sometimes you say, well, I just don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. Well, listen, pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues because He can pray through you. And any time the Holy Spirit is praying through you, He is praying God's perfect will for your life. There have been stories, and some of you have heard them, where uh, you wake up in the middle of the night and you have an urgency to pray, but you don't know what to pray for. And uh, I've got a friend, he, when we were in youth, he, he woke up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and he just, oh, he just had a burden to pray and he didn't know what to pray for. And he just started praying in tongues and he was just, just spending as much time as he could just praying in tongues that night. And then all of a sudden, while he was praying in tongues, he heard brakes squeal and there was a, there was a very severe car wreck right by his house. And it was a car wreck. It was one of those stories where the doctor says, you shouldn't have came out alive and the person came out without even a scratch. And, and he believes, he honestly believes, that God woke him up, he didn't know what to pray, so he began to pray in tongues, and he was praying for that young man who was going to be in the car. Listen, we serve a supernatural God. And, and He doesn't live by our boundaries, He doesn't live by our ideas. But listen, if, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you're able to pray in tongues, my encouragement is, do it. Do it. I know people who were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues and, and, and had the power of God and they were so excited. And then after a period of time, they prayed in tongues less and less and less to the point to where they say, you know what, I don't think I can even pray in tongues anymore. Listen, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. You don't have to do it loudly. You don't have to stand up at your workplace and say, Shada Bahama. You don't have to do that. Listen, pray in tongues in your quiet place, in your private place. Listen, pray in tongues. Amen. Look at somebody and say, Pray in tongues. Okay. It's not a real popular topic, but it's very important in our lives. Listen, we have the authority to ask anything, and we must choose wisely when you're praying in the holy spirit you're asking for the right things many times our words words which are seeds of faith are wasted on pointless praying think about that every word that comes out of your mouth is a seed it's a seed that god gives you this is a scripture taught i mean this is a principle taught in scripture every word that comes out of your mouth is a seed and that seed is to be planted in fertile ground, but many times we waste our words on pointless praying. And let me take it a step farther. Uh, and also on pointless talking. We, we've talked about the Scripture here a few times here lately about how a wise man speaks very little. A wise man may not talk a whole lot. He may only have a few things to say, but what he says is, is impacting. But listen, many times when we're praying, we spend all of our time, God will you, God will you, God I would like, God I need, God this, God that. And, and what God is saying, let's, let's scale back and let's say, okay God, what is your will? And let me pray that will for, for my life. What's your will for my family? And then pray that will. What's your will for my kids? And let's pray that. You know, you may be praying for your kid to be a doctor and it's God's, God's desire for them to be a lawyer. You know? So we've got to find God's will and we've got, to, we've got to invest our words in praying for His will in our lives. Listen, we must learn to plant our prayers in the fertile soil of God's will. If you can find God's will and you can plant your prayers, you can plant your words in the soil listen, you are going to begin to see a harvest in your life. If you begin to pray for God's will, listen, this is how Jesus taught us to pray. He, he taught us to pray, Your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. Not my will. Jesus showed us that. Not my will, God, but Your will. Not my will for my kids, but Your will. Not my will for my wife. You may be spending your time at praying that, that God would just make your wife nicer and, and kinder and, 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 and more pleasant and all of these things. And it may God, be God's will for her to be as bold as a lion. Amen? We're going to talk about that here in a minute too. We, a lot of times we say, you know, I just... I just, you know, just, just let them calm down, God. And God's saying, you know what? I want my, my people to rise up. 
is victorious warriors for me. And so we've got to be careful that we are planting our seed in the fertile soil of God's will. All right, let's look at the power of choice. Look at somebody and say, you've got a choice. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, I did not get this proofread. So if there's, if there's errors, it's, I'm sorry. All right, God gives us the power to choose, but He does not make us immune to the consequences of our choices. Think about that. Eve had the power to choose. God did not make her eat the apple, did did He? The enemy did not make her eat the apple. Or the fruit. We'll say the fruit. Let's be biblically correct here. But Eve chose to take a bite. And it tasted so good that Eve chose to take it to Adam. And Adam chose to go with the wife. Listen, you're going to be able to choose a lot of different things in your life. And you know what? There are going to be moments where God... Listen, nowhere in the story of Adam and Eve did we hear about God saying, no, Eve, don't do it. No, Adam, don't do it. Listen, we don't hear any of that. Listen, God stepped out of the picture... And he let them choose. Have you ever thought about that? God wasn't there saying, no, don't do it, don't do it. Listen, we have the Holy Spirit today who who says, no, listen, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But there may be times in your life where God just says, all right, let's see. Let's see what they choose. Listen, uh, you've got to be very careful. Listen, you may choose to have a boyfriend or girlfriend, but I would recommend that you choose to wait for the one that God has for you. Save yourself a lot of pain and agony. Choose the right one. Right, baby? She chose right. She chose right. (laughs) I chose right. But listen, I'm just going to tell you in a very transparent and upfront way that I could have saved myself a lot of pain and agony if I would have just, if I would have just not, not dated or, or formed relationships with anyone until I found the right one. I know there's nobody else here like that that's wasted years and time and money and, and, and things on the wrong one. But, but listen, teenagers, it's worth the wait. Look at somebody and say it's worth the wait. You may choose a career. You may choose a career that, that, that's pleasing to you and, and you, you enjoy it and things like that. But listen, I wanted to be a doctor more than anything. I wanted to be a doctor and I had it all planned out and that's what I wanted to do. But listen, that wasn't God's choice for my life. That's not what He chose for me. And so you've got to make sure that you choose wisely. It may not be the most logic, uh, logical uh, thing for your life, but listen, I'm telling you that if you will be careful to choose wisely, then you will enjoy the consequences of your choice. Because there's going to be consequences. It's either going to be good, or it's going to be bad. But, but there's going to be a consequence. For Adam and Eve, we know that the consequences of their choice was, was negative, and we're paying for that today. Even today, we're paying for those choices. But listen, uh, if, if they could have just as easily said, you know what, I choose life. I choose what God said. Listen, I'm telling you this morning, if you don't hear anything else today, listen to this. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. God gives you the power to choose, but He does not make you immune to the consequences of your choices. Let's talk about choose to listen. Choose to listen. This is something we're going through with our kids. The Word says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. A lot of times we're listening, but we're not comprehending. I remember there were some classes and 
in, in, in high school where I was listening, but I wasn't comprehending. The teacher sounded like the Charlie Brown teacher, the wah, 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 wah. Amen? Sometimes in marriage, you're listening, but you're not comprehending because your spouse sounds like wah, 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 wah. Right? Nobody's going to say amen? <laughs> I remember being a kid and my parents would start talking and because I thought I knew everything and I had everything under control and I was grown when I wasn't grown, all I heard was wah, 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 wah. Your parents saying, don't do this. It's going to cause you a lot of pain and agony. And all I hear is wah, 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 wah. The Bible says if you have ears to hear, you should. It would be a good idea to use them to listen. And it'd be a good idea to understand what the Spirit has to say, and I'm going to show you why that's so important. Because listen, if you can't hear the will of God, then you can't pray the will of God, and therefore you're going to make some wrong choices. 23 says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. That's Mark 4, 23. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. God expects us to listen to His voice and to choose to obey. We pray this every morning before our kids go to school. Our kids pray, Lord, help me to listen and to obey the first time every time. Help me to listen and to obey the first time every time. Listen, we should be praying as adults. Lord, help me to listen and to obey the first time every time. Every time. Well, let me just give you some insight. If the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you obey, He will speak to you again. If you make a lifestyle of listening and obeying the Holy Spirit's voice, then He will make a lifestyle of speaking to you. But if you are one who will listen to His voice and choose to disobey, then there's going to come a time where He's going to stop speaking. And you're going to come and you're going to say, it just feels like I'm all alone. It just feels like God's nowhere to be found. It just seems like I'm in a desert place. Well, listen, if you will listen and you will obey the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life, then He will choose to continue to speak. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to listen. Look at somebody else and say, I'm going to obey. All right. You are only as successful as your hearing and your doing. You're only as successful as your hearing and your doing. In the workplace, if your boss says, I want you to finish 30 contracts in the next three months, and you say, yes sir, I, I, I will work diligently, I, I, will, I will do these things, but you spend your time at work on Facebook and social media and playing Pong on the computer, listen, and you don't get your 30 contracts done, guess what? You're not very successful, are you? But if you will listen to what the Master says, if you listen to what Jesus says, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, and you say, you know what, I'm going to hear what you're saying, and I'm going to follow through, and I'm going to do what you've told me to do, then you are going to experience success in your life. The Bible says it like this, it's better for a man to say, I'm not going to do anything, than it is for a man to say, yes, I'll do it, and never do it. Amen? So we've got to not only hear the voice of God, but we've got to follow through and obey His will for our lives. Every word you hear is a seed with a mental picture attached to it. You've heard the saying that says, I see what you're saying. How many's ever said, I see what you're saying? Because what? You, you, have got a, you now have a mental picture of what the other person is saying. A lot of times, I look around the room when I'm preaching, and I see a lot of faces that look kind of blank. But then there may be a time during the week where it's like, now I see what he was saying. 
a lot of times the Holy Spirit's speaking to us, and we're hearing what He's saying, but we, we haven't grasped a hold of that mental picture that goes with it. Every word that is spoken to us has a mental picture attached to it. Listen, we've got to see what God's saying. That's why the Bible says, He who has ears, let him hear. Who has eyes, let him see. Listen, we've got to hear and see the will of the Father. If you don't know what God's will is for your life, I want to encourage you. Teenagers, you, you guys are, uh, you get a head start on this. Some of us, it may have taken longer, but, but if you can grasp a hold, Mario, you have a head start on this. If you can say, God, what's your will for my life? What's your will for my life? And, and began to seek that will, began to listen to His voice, began to see that in your life, then you will be able to act on that and you will experience success. Therefore, if your hearing is off, your seeing is off as well. If your hearing is off, then your seeing is off as well, and you are going to experience spiritual disaster. Let's talk about confidence real quickly this morning. Confidence. Our text says, 1 John 5.14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. One of the key words in this Scripture is simply confidence. Confidence. Let's look. It says, what I've got here it says, we must have the confidence to choose. We must have the confidence to choose. Here's what I believe. The problem is that most Christians do not have the confidence to choose where to eat lunch, much less where to invest their time, their talent, and their treasure. Most of us have no confidence to pick a place to eat lunch. Some of you, after service today, will be standing around in a circle somewhere on this property saying, where do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. Where do you want to eat? Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? Doesn't matter to me. You go on a date. What do you want to do? I don't, I, look, I liked it when dating was simple where the guy picked what to do and you just went and did it. My wife said amen. She's a woman, so I guess it's okay. Wasn't things, weren't, it was just simple. But now, no, we get in the car and we say, okay, what do you, you want to go see a movie? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. We have no confidence to choose. Listen, what God wants is first to say, oh, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Because this is what I believe. But here's the problem. Most of us, we have no idea what God's will for our life is, so we have no confidence in the choices that we make. I remember I was with Pastor Mike and Miss Elaine Last year, I was, we were with them and we were getting a Sam's account set up for this church. And uh, we were in the office and we were sitting there and we were getting ready to go to Sam's. And Miss Elaine stopped and she said, wait, Sam's at this time of the day is always packed full and you can't ever get, there's always a long line of people that, that are waiting to get service at Sam's because uh, we're talking about New Orleans here. And so uh, she said, let's stop right now and pray that God will clear out the lines and we can get in and out so that we can get to the service in time this evening. And um, so we did. We stopped right then and prayed. She heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. We stopped right then. We began to pray. It was just a short, simple prayer. God... We're on a time crunch. We need the lines to be gone at Sam's and we need to get in and out so we can get back for service. We get in the car. We go to Sam's. And we walk in the door and there is no line whatsoever. Not one person at the service desk. And she said, whew, I'm glad we prayed. And we went and got our cards and, and did our account. We just walked up there and took care of things and walked off. And when we turned around, there was a line that stretched all the way to the door. I'm telling you that, listen, if you will be careful to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and act on it, 
then listen, you will find yourself in the place to where you have confidence to choose where to go, what to do, when to do. And listen, what we need as Christians is we need our confidence back. We need our confidence back. Now watch. We've got to have confidence. The, what we have here is we must have confidence in the authority that God has given us to choose. He gave us that authority. We can't have confidence in ourselves, but we can have confidence in Christ that would, say, that would say, I've given you the authority to choose and to choose wisely. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked man flees, though no one pursues. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Think about that. The wicked flee even though nobody's pursuing them. Can you, can you imagine that? Uh, the wicked, this is the mental picture. Listen, every word is, is equipped with a mental picture. The, the, the wicked man's always running around looking behind him and, and guess what? There's nobody there. There's nobody there. That's why if you're living in a lifestyle of sin, you're always looking over your shoulder. If you're living a lifestyle of secret sin, you're always looking to see if somebody's going to catch you. There's nobody there. Holy Spirit knows. God knows. But, but you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. But the Bible says that the righteous uh, go around bold as a lion. Bold as a lion. Bold to choose. Confidence to choose. That's why we have to have confidence in the choices that we make. But because, of the, because we choose wrongly so many times, our confidence is stolen. Do we realize who we are in Christ? Now we talk about it a lot around here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time this morning, but we must know that we have the same perception of ourselves many times as we had prior to salvation. Many times we use excuses and we excuse ourselves from decisive boldness due to personality defects. I'll stay right there. I know some of you are taking notes. I don't want to go too quick. But most of the time, Christians have the same perception of themselves as they had prior to them ever coming to know Christ. As if nothing ever changed. And we excuse ourselves because of our personality defects. Watch this. Well, I've always been this way. It's quiet, but some of us have said that. Well, I've always been this way, or I've always been able, I've never been able to make good choices. Listen, always and never should never apply to a Christian's life. It should never apply to a Christian's life. I've always been this way does not apply to you because the Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, somebody say new, creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God is trying to tell us something in this one verse. We see that we are a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things become new. New. The words, I've always been this way, do not apply to you. Because your old nature, your old personality defects, some of you who are indecisive, listen, I'm talking to myself here, there's many times where I'm indecisive in the small things, but listen, your indecisive nature died with your old man. Because that is not a character of Christ. We are to possess the character of of Christ. So what we've got to learn is that we have got to be decisive in the things that we do because we are walking in the will of the Father. Are you with me? I know some of this, this is hard. Uh, just to get a better picture, you may say, well, I've always had a temper. My dad had a temper and his dad had a temper. Does that, but does that give you the license to have a bad temper? No, because you can't say, well, I've always been this way. Because you have become a new creation. Well, I've always drank. 
My parents drank. My, my, my grandparents drank. There, his parents would look weird. There's just a whole line of alcoholics, but does that give you the license to be an alcoholic? No, it doesn't. But I'm telling you, that we have got to take the character of Christ and say the things that used to control me, the things that used to bind me, the things that used to hinder me have passed away. You've heard me say it before. But most of the time, we as Christians spend all of our time digging those things back up. Well, I used to be an alcoholic. Let's dig it up. I used to have a temper. Let's dig it up. The moment that you said yes to Christ, that old junk passed away. It's buried. That's the whole point of baptism. It's buried in the grave. Those things went down under the water as if it went in the grave and you came out a new creation. Speaking of that, we are getting ready to have a baptism service. And if there are any of you in this room that maybe you have even been baptized in the past, there's nowhere in the Word of God that says you can only be baptized one time in your life. Nowhere. Okay? So, I want to encourage you that if you need to be baptized because you have been controlled by the things of the flesh, you have been controlled. So, look, sometimes I think people could just get baptized every month because they got some things that need to be buried. And you need to come out a new creation. So there may be some of you that need to be baptized, and there's a place in your bulletins uh, this, this morning where you can fill that out. And we, we're going to get that on the schedule. But listen, we've got to remember and understand that we are no longer the same as we were before salvation. God wants you to be as bold as a lion. Who is stealing your confidence to make good choices? Who's stealing that confidence from you? Well, some may say the devil. Some may say yourself, but let's look at this. Dear friends, this is 1 John 3, 21. says, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. If whose heart? Our heart. Somebody say, my heart. So, if you want to make this personal, you could say, if my heart does not condemn me, then I will have confidence before God. 1 John 3.22 says, and receive from Him anything we ask because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. If you pray the will of the Father, He hears you, He gives you what you need. But, there's a stipulation. If we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. I want to talk to you real quickly uh, just to beware of sin. Keep out. Keep out. The, the enemy would love to, to woo you, to, to, to cause you to be entrapped in the pen of sin. Because in the pen of sin, you cannot hear the will of the Father. In the pen of sin, you can't hear His voice. In the pen of sin, you have no idea what the, what the Spirit wants from you. And because of that, you're going to lose your confidence when it comes to the things of God. When we make bad choices, choices that displease our Father, we willingly forfeit our confidence. So I'm going to ask again, who's still in your confidence? Somebody say me. I am. When we make bad choices, choices that displease our Father, we willingly forfeit our confidence. Watch this. When you make bad choices, number one, your heart will condemn you. Look, you don't, you don't need a devil to do that anymore. If you're, if you're constantly making bad choices, you're going you're gonna to beat yourself up. Amen? When you start making choices that you know is displeasing to your Father, you're going to beat yourself up and your own heart is going to begin to condemn you. 
I remember growing up, if I did something that I knew my parents weren't going to like, they didn't, I didn't have to wait to be punished. I was punished enough because I was walking around thinking, man, I've really screwed up this time. I've really messed up this time. And, and I, how many of you, your parents would make you wait for a spanking? They weren't going to give it to you right away. Just wait till your father gets home. Then you spend the next six hours. Oh God, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. This is not good. Or they would say, if you get in trouble at school, you're going to get in trouble at home too. If you get a paddling at school, guess what? You get a paddling at home too. So you go get a paddle. I don't know if anybody got a paddling from the principal before I did. And you get a paddling uh, at school, and then you got three or four more hours before you get home, and all you have to do is dread the next one. Your own heart will condemn you. You don't need anybody else to do it for you. Your own heart will condemn you, and it will steal your confidence to choose. Secondly, your prayers go unanswered. You know why? Because you're no longer in the will of the Father. The Bible says that if you pray the will of your Father, then He hears you. If you pray the will of your Father. And what we just read is that the way we receive what we ask for from God is when we are living in accordance with His Word. So when you make bad choices, not only will your heart begin to condemn you, but your prayers will go unanswered. And number three, you lose your boldness to ask again. You lose your boldness to ask again. How many has ever asked for something and you did not get it? You go to somebody, maybe you go to your boss and you, you ask for a raise. And he laughs in your face. How many knows this is going to be harder to go back the next time? Amen? And so many times when we ask God for things and it's not according to His will and we're not living according to His Word and our prayers go unanswered, what we do most of the time is we quit asking. We quit asking. All right. Let's look at this. Romans 12 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. This is God's will. If you're wondering what God's will is for your life, this is it this morning. The word abhor means to regard with disgust and hatred. Regard with disgust or hatred. You've heard me say before that I absolutely hate, despise, and am disgusted by pornography. Hate it. Hate it. Because I see what it does to people's lives. I see people who have been addicted by it. I've seen people who have thrown their marriages away for, for the things that were birthed in pornography. I've seen people destroy their entire families because of pornography. And listen, I hate it. I hate alcohol. Because I see what it does to families. You say, well, Jesus made the water to wine. Well, He sure did. wasn't grape juice. It was wine. Let me help you. It was alcoholic wine. So, I'll just say that. But the Bible advises us advises us to not get drunk and to not become a drunkard and to, and to have a lifestyle of alcoholism and all of these different things. And listen, the problem with our society is that we have such an abundance and, and it's become such a part of our culture that, that most people who drink, drink to get drunk. So guess what? I hate alcohol. Because I've seen families destroyed. I've seen lives destroyed. I saw a bus full of teenagers destroyed in Kentucky because of one drunk driver. Lives lost, families destroyed, churches destroyed. Every Listen, I hate it. But the question is, the things that hold you bound, do, do you hate your temper? Do you hate how you lose your temper? Do you hate how you look at pornography? Do you hate, do you hate those things? 
Do you abhor from the things that are evil in your life? Or do you tolerate them? Because if you are in the place where you are tolerating the things that hold you back, then you are forfeiting your confidence to ask God for anything. Amen? Alright? Whether you like it or not, look at somebody and say amen. Because it's true. It's the Word of God. Listen, beware of reason. So the first thing was beware of sin. Secondly, beware of reason. We know it got the woman in trouble. Eve in trouble when the question was asked, did God really say that? Is that really what He said? Is that really what He meant? And we began to reason things out. When you reason with natural logic, doubt will surely abound. When you reason with your mind, with natural logic, doubt will surely abound. Well, we can't afford it right now. But God said, yeah, but we can't afford it. But God said, yeah, but I don't see how it's possible. Well, God said, God said to marry this person, but I think she's ugly. But God said it. God said, God said to spend the rest of your life with this person. Yeah, but I want this person. Natural logic. God said to go to work here. Yeah, but this place over here has better, better promotions, better, better possibilities, better packages. Yeah, but God said do it. When we begin to logic, well, reason with natural logic, and if you allow yourself to do that, then doubt will surely creep in and steal your confidence to choose. James 2.23 says, And the Scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed. Somebody say believed. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Abraham didn't reason with natural logic when God said, leave everything you know. Everything you know and just go. Just go. Leave everything... Look, he didn't go and say, well, yeah, but the land is better here, the, this and this, and my family and this, and all. He, no, he, he just said, okay, I believe you, and we're going to go. But many times, God is looking for us to simply believe rather than reason with our minds. Choose based on your trust in God rather than your ability to reason. There's a lot of churches doing a lot of things based on their ability to reason. But this church will be a church that chooses based on our trust in God. When it seems like God's saying go, and it seems impossible, that's the way we're going to go. Amen? That's my prayer and my belief for your life is that when God speaks to you, you will not sit down and make a list of pros and cons. You won't sit down and make a list of, 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 of what you really want and what God. You won't do that. You'll just say, okay, God, if you said it, I believe it, and that settles it. You better make your choices based on your trust in God rather than your ability to reason. Your slogan should be, He is able, therefore I can. He is able. Therefore, I can. Let's stand this morning.